Welcome back to KSP Making History, and we've made some modifications to our craft, and Val is flying this time. We're coming up to a maneuver node around Minmus, and I don't have a huge amount of fuel, so I've got to be a little bit careful. Hopefully we've got enough for this, otherwise I'm going to have to rebuild and rescue Val. In any case, uh, 327 meters per second, and we want to go when we hit 7.5 seconds or there or thereabouts. And we're going to land somewhere in this kind of big circle here. We'll decide where we want to go want to see how well this maneuver goes. So let's just bring that maneuver node in a little bit. Doesn't much matter at this point. Uh, anywhere around that is fine. We don't have to be exact. Just keep an eye on our fuel because we're going to have to use that fuel to get back off the surface. And there we go. We're going to be coming down now. And let's just reposition for this maneuver node and just fine tune that sort of maneuver so that we are coming in where I wanted us to. That'll do. So just like Jeb, Val is now a two-star pilot. However, <laughs> we've got to decide where we want to land. Now, doing this kind of landing is probably the most benefit on Minmus. Uh, you get to see where you're going and you come down nearly, nearly vertically as you're actually coming towards the surface. So you don't have to spend too much um, actually um, correcting things as you're actually going down. So um, if we just move forward on this, let's just walk forward a little bit. You can see, well, we're not going to move very far, so we're going to end up on the highlands, or maybe this is mid low, low, uh, no, lowlands. This is lowlands? That's kind of the highest part of the planet. Anyway, anyway <laughs> we're going to end up somewhere in this region. It's, that may well be that it's not going to be flat. So 58 meters per second, so we're going to have to cancel that as we actually come in. I've already deployed the landing legs, let's just put that button up there. So now we can go retrograde, and surface retrograde that is. This is going to naturally get towards uh, the straight up kind of vector as we get closer to the surface. Uh, Minmus is going to be pull is constantly pulling us towards the center of the moon, and uh, that's why this is going to continually move. I've only got limited amounts of fuel, even though I have actually added four Oscar B fuel tanks. Uh, we've got a couple of solar panels, but they're not particularly exposed to sunlight at the moment. And just a couple of extra experiments. Remember, of course, our contract is to land on Minmus and walk on the surface. Okay, so we're going to be coming in, and I'm going to get a fair bit closer before I start doing any... Well, I can't really do a suicide burn, because uh, I don't have any statistics to tell me what I need to do a suicide burn. There we go, I were coming in, and there we go. So we can get a couple more experiments, and we're going to have to keep them. And we'll have to get them back from the those experiment, the, those experiment units once we're on the ground, I think. So 125, 126. I think I actually want to slow us down a little bit. I just want to make sure I have some kind of uh, safety margin that isn't going to get used up as we get closer to the surface. It's not very efficient to do so, but it is a whole lot nicer for my blood pressure. So let's just warp in a little bit further. Um, if I can click on the line, warp in. And what I'm looking for is the ground clutter, the rocks. <laughs> We're not going to collide with them, hopefully, but um, I am looking for those to see when I need to th start thinking about burning a little bit more. We'll come down to 11,000 now. We should start seeing them any second. Uh, there they are. You can just about see them. So again, I'm going to slow us down a little bit. Okay, here we come. And then let's keep on heading down. Hopefully this isn't going to be terribly steep, but we'll see once we get closer. Uh, we can switch now to stability assist mode and push that vector so that we are going towards straight down essentially by correcting that that way. If I just keep increasing my engine power, you'll see that, yeah, our speed is decreasing, but now we're pretty much going straight down anyway. Ish. <laughs> and now we are. Yeah, now we are going straight down. Okay, you can see I don't have a great amount of fuel left. That is not a lot to get off the surface. And this could even strand Val. So I have to be a little bit frugal and we'll see how well we go. So heading down towards the surface now, uh, 4,000 meters to go. And of course, this would be a mountainous region. So that, that is not a true indication of how far to the ground. 
So we're going to burn and slow ourselves down a little bit. Minmus's gravitational pull is not too gr not too high, so even though this isn't terribly efficient, we're not using up a huge amount of fuel by doing so. There we are. Lower ourselves down to 10 meters per second. And as we see our shadow coming in, we can use the shadow to judge our landing point. So seven meters per second. These landing legs, unfortunately, will crumple if we give them any kind of uh, excuse. So I want to just bring ourselves all the way down as close as possible to zero when we land. And that still killed those landing legs. <laughs> Oh, well, he's killed one of the landing legs. Okay, so now we have three landing legs and technically a fourth with the engine. So, okay, so we can get a crew report now and keep that. For the rest, we're going to have to get out. So hopefully that's not going to tip us too much. This is somewhat of the problem. However, we can grab the data from the thermometer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Board. Board. Oh, that's not good. Can we use our SAS to tip us back onto our feet? Uh, well, I guess we can get another temperature scan. And this is uh, not great, has to be said. I have recovered from it before, so let me do a little bit of, um, well, nudging. Okay, so a little bit of careful nudging, <laughs> just pushing one direction that's opposite, obviously, the way we were facing. We're back onto our feet. Of course, every time I get out, it's going to fall over, and that's going to be a bit of a problem considering we're supposed to walk on the surface. Although it counts, counts. Uh, I guess we can't really put a flag down, though, if this thing keeps falling over. And uh, that's why having a two-person capsule at some point may be a really good idea. So let's grab... The pressure scan and uh, let's take whoops not log data take data take data store experiments board and we're back in again you can take a pressure scan from here oh no oh no ah sas let's just get you back on your your three remaining landing legs yep there we go <laughs> okay and now we should probably get off the surface we'll build a much more robust land later to, um, well, to explore Minmus more thoroughly. It has to be a much heavier lander, which uh, will obviously be a much heavier launcher. So let's see if we have enough fuel. That's not a great deal. So we're going to be heading east, which is that way. So we're going to apply a little bit of thrust just to get off the ground. That's enough. And then we can just convince our craft to head this way. Okay. And we're going to head 45 degrees up. There we go. And we don't need very much to actually get us to a reasonable height on Minmus. In fact, that's actually reasonable. And then we want to go towards the horizon, of course. There we go, horizon. And then we're going to warp up a little bit higher. As you can see, our progress vector is coming in. And we should... Uh, there we go. Yeah. Coming out of warp. And now we want to see if we can get into orbit. <laughs> we still don't have very much fuel, but it shouldn't take us very much to get into orbit either. So if we just do this, we can fast forward till we get, I don't know, about 30 seconds from that, or there or thereabouts. 40 seconds will do. We'll keep ourselves prograde and we'll start burning. So as you can see, it takes very, very little to push the APO away from us. So if we just zoom out and I just increase that, You'll see that's pushing us much more towards an orbit. And there we have an, well, an orbit, but not, <laughs> it's not quite safe just yet. So we probably want to think about uh, leaving. Uh, well, first of all, let's come around here a little bit, warp. And our fuel isn't great, but we'll see how well we do. We can certainly get out of uh, Minmus' sphere of influence. Um, but otherwise we may have to end up with a rescue craft. So we're pointing towards prograde again. Let's just make sure we're above 10. Yep, that is fine. And then let's see if we can plot a maneuver. Now, because we're equatorial, this is much more conventional. So if we pick something around about here and uh, go burn prograde, that will get us 
back towards Kerbin. And without very much expenditure at all. So that's 7 million uh, meters. Let's just zoom out here a little bit and see if we can get that a little bit closer with some... Uh, yeah, the, unfortunately the... Uh, oh no, that's an encounter with the moon. Don't need that just yet, so let's keep going. 4 million, 3 million, 2 million. Oh, that's another encounter with the moon. <laughs> okay, 1 million. And in we come. 174, 175. And there we are, roughly 40 kilometers. Let's get it to 30. 33, 32, 31, 30. Okay, so that's what it would take, 223 meters per second. But the question really is, do we have 223 meters per second left in the tanks? Uh, don't know, because I don't have um, COVID Engineer installed. I, I, this is the li literally the part limit for our current VAB, so I couldn't put even a single more part on here and all the parts I wanted, as, as you can see, I, I kind of needed. So um, it's an eight second burn. I think we'll have enough. But let's get towards where that burn is. So let's zoom all the way in. And we want to come around to about here. Warp here. And we'll go around the backside of Minmus. And approach in our burn point. And we want to be exact on this one as much as possible. So I'm just going to align ourselves again. And we can then... Get a little bit closer. Warp. Got the sunlight back. We can retract our landing legs now, even though that doesn't really matter in space, but just for aesthetic reasons. And now we just have to wait until it's four seconds and then burn. So incoming 18, 10, 7, 6, 5, 4. Let's just correct a little bit. Ooh, our fuel isn't really, really close to being empty. Really, really close to being empty. <laughs> 1.1 meters per second. Okay, now how how close are we with this to Kerbin? Uh, that's really not great. Uh, what's our periapsis like? 48. So can we spend just a little bit more? 25. Oh, so that's just a little bit over the top. However, I guess that will do. Uh, I think I may well decelerate a little bit as we're coming uh, or maybe accelerate a little. Uh, yeah, I think let's just go retrograde for a second. Tiny, tiny burn. There we go. <laughs> How much fuel have I got left? 1.04 oxidizers, 0 0.85 liquid fuel. Yeah, this is probably about as close as I ever, ever want to put this. Uh, I have done it before where I've had to get out and push with RCS on my EVA suits. I don't want to do that again, thank you. So I will see you back at the Space Center for all of the science we've collected. And here we are back on the surface. We've got uh, Moon Aligner B has brought back enough science. We've got 187 on top of some more I just did from orbital maneuvers with EVA above Kerbin. And uh, that's given us enough to spend at least on another node and uh, quite a fair amount of money. So let's see what our next mission is. Uh, plank flag on the moon. So again, uh, we've got to have a moon lander for that. And uh, yeah, we've got to be careful. Um, however, we can get more funds from these missions, science data from around Kerbin and the moon from surface of Minmus, etc., gets lots more funds. Uh, Duna is uh, quite far away. We don't really have a, a Duna lander yet, uh, so we have to consider a moon lander at some point soon, so we may want to rebuild a lander and a craft that can go to either one. So if it can land on the moon, it can land on Minmus e much, much easier. So that will be good. However, let's take a look, first of all, at expanding this. 900,000 but EVAs can collect surface samples and we can resource transfer. So we're going to spend on that down to 225,000. Ouch. 
But at the same time, we can then spend on all of these others uh, nodes that have now become available, like the heavier rocketry nodes. So our mainsail, sort of our, that's our in main interplanetary engine. Uh, twin bore, again, you can build those as well. Uh, bobcats, little skiff, cheetah, and that tiny, tiny little vernier engine, and the Kodiak, of course. I think the Kodiak is the one that we want to put on those, um, those Russian-style boosters. However, in the meantime, uh, we can look at other nodes. Um, we've got 289, and these nodes are how much? 160. Ooh, ouch. So we can only really afford one node at the moment. Having those retractable pho photovoltaic panels are very useful for later game. Uh, rather than just the ones that are just stuck to the side of our landers. But uh, I guess we can live without them for now. Uh, electric screwdriver is more for uh, a mod. It's a Kerbal inventory system. Precision engineering. We've got the hex. So that's something we want at some point. That will serve us great, uh, greatly for um, unmanned satellites. Command modules. Uh, specialized control. Okay. Advanced landing. What are we having here? Just the larger heat shields and landing struts. We don't need those just yet. So I think what we're going to look, be looking for is either some sort of science, your electrics, fuel cells, thermal control system, and a solar array. That's the seismic accelerometer. That's more science. That would be very good to have. And that, that's the Octo 2. Okay, I'm just going to look for science and then I'll come back and we'll see which one we want to spend on. Unfortunately, the science node I really kind of like would be this scanning tech node, but it's sort of out of reach all the way out here. So I think for the meantime, I'm going to use and grab this and just start building larger rockets. This is a two and a half meter shell, and we've also got some docking ports in here. So I'm just going to take that for now because we're going to need more funds before we need more science. And that's because in order to get rid of the part limit at the VAB, we're going to need about half a million funds. Now uh, we do have enough science over to uh, complete another node. Um, not any of these, but we can certainly just take that one, I think. And that's going to be a precursor for the later ones anyway. So that will do just fine. All right, to larger rockets then. So here's our extra liner that we previously created. Um, it, I've just got the same modified lander on top of it, but it's the same rocket. As you can see, it's too many parts. It's uh, five over our part limit. So we've got to get this part cap down somehow. So if we take off this fuel tank adapter, uh, we should now be able to go for, uh, whoops, payload is the right section. Yeah, the protective shell here. We can take this off for a second. And get rid of you. And if we have a protective shell there, whoops, <laughs> let's get this right, straight up, really. Uh, in fact, straight up to there and then capped off. Yep. And then we can put this back. So we're getting a much larger rocket. It's reduced our delta V a little bit because that contains fuel as well. However, we're 34 parts. Now we can uh, go less efficient and take off our fuel ducts 8800 and 32 parts out of 30. however if we have a look what our various delta v is going to be like um we're going to get all the way to well pretty much all the way to orbit with just these boosters this stage and then our aj10 and the wolfhound is going to take over for the push towards minmus or the moon um probably minimus only we, we want to get more funds so having this be uh you know be this efficient is good which means we can probably save some fuel which means i can probably get rid of two out of four of those fuel tanks so uh we may be able to even get once we get to minimus use this to break and uh, then we can go from there so let's just put two of those in instead of four and then just for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to move the photovoltaic panels around. And that, I think, is a nicely improved lander. Let's put that there. Uh, no, I want the central gravity low, don't I? So, yeah, put it down there. And the same thing with these, actually. Let's keep them quite low. 
All right, and then that now is under the pot count. Now it is 30,000 instead of 14, but it does give us much more Delta V. The previous launcher that we went to all the way to Inmus and landed on with was 6,000 or a little bit over 6,000. So this is much more capable. We are at the power limit still, however, and um, I don't think I want to get rid of, well, I suppose we can get rid of those two and we can add a, uh, you know, launch stabilizer. Uh, with, without that, uh, however, uh, let's just put this here. Uh, one launch stabilizer or something. We're still over the part limit. So can I do without these? Yeah, I think we can. Just because I quite like a, a rocket that is um, not standing on its own engine. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Uh, that's where the second engine is, so we probably want uh, maybe up here. Yeah, that looks fine. And then we can bring this rocket down towards the ground. There we go. And we have a, uh, a nice looking rocket for a change. So we want to change this to a clamshell deploy and up the ejection force. And that is our extra line of B. Now it will get us to Minimus. It's more expensive to do so, less efficient but uh, a whole lot more comfortable on the amount of fuel. And in fact, this probably will go much, much further as well. But um, let's leave that to another time. So we could just take that to Minimus, but I think what we will need to do is actually generate more funds. So let's take a look at what the missions give us and let's see what I need to do to you know, get more funds. We need about 450,000 plus some you know, spare change to be able to launch rockets in. So, you know, half a million slash 550,000, something like that would be fine. So we've got a bunch of different missions. So we can take the science data from space around Kerbin and the moon, um, or Minmus even, science data from surface of Minmus. So we can get 56,000, is that total? Yeah, from doing that. So that'll take us up to 250, 260, 270, etc. Um, Another 15,000 there, so we can take both of those regardless. Uh, both of those are dur uh, duration 12 years. Yeah, I think we'll be going back for 12 years, so let's take the, get the advance. Um, nothing for Duna yet. Nothing for Plan Plantifying the Moon yet. Um, Police positions have like a Kiosynchrous also Orbit of Kerbin. Now, that is an interesting one. Um, unmanned probe that has an antenna can generate power. Arrive at the specific... Uh, orbit with marginal deviation, uh, but it has to have a materials bay. That's quite a heavy thing, so we can't do a, a small satellite for that. Okay, um, how about this one? That has to have a material bay as well. <laughs> Rescue Carlton from orbit of the moon, so we would have to build a two-person craft for that, but we could do that. Uh, yeah, so... Hmm... I may have to build something specifically for one of these. Let me take a look, see what we can do. In fact, we can actually reject a few of these and see if it gives us a better uh, approach. Oh, that one's not too bad. Position satellite in an equatorial orbit of Minmus. And we just need an antenna and can generate power, but it has to have enough antenna to get out to Minmus. Remember, our current ones have only got out to the moon, so we need to make sure we have more antennas on that than normal. So this is the mission I went for, position a satellite in the equatorial orbit of Minmus. To get that done, and we also have surface of Minmus, science from surface of Minmus, um, we can sort of reuse that satellite if it's got enough fuel left, it'll land it and then use that just to transmit the last bit of science for that. To look at that, I've modified our smaller vessel uh, for an unmanned mission, because that's what it's asking for. And in here we've got the unmoon aligner. So again, I've removed these fuel ducts because of the part count and no other reason, otherwise I would use them. And in here, we've got a pretty standard satellite that we've, similar we've used before. We've got a couple of these high gain antennas, uh, spare Communicron 16 on the top, and the rest is fairly obvious. So I'm not going to belabor those points. Let's put this back as we expected. And that will do, I think. Uh, yes. We at the part count limit. We are. Okay. So let's save that. Check our staging. Both all of them to start with, get rid of them, and make sure that solid fuel will reduce that even further. See if we can get something nice and uh, pretty there. 
and that should be good to launch, I think. Doesn't matter, much matter when we launch for Mimus, really, when we have this amount of Delta V. It's got 7,000, I think I remember rightly, so that should be enough for us to choose a decent launch spot. Okay, so I had to change it a little bit to get fins on the bottom, because uh, it just wasn't really uh, going to fly very well without them, unfortunately, with those extra large boosters. At least not with the Octo. In any case, I also put a reaction wheel in right about here, and we've just used the thermometer to get science data from space around Kerbin. We now have to get to Mimus again, but this time unmanned. So let's just... Um, first of all, we're going to get to this... Uh, node and then that's going to correct our inclination i'm just going to do it while we're in Kerbin orbit because we just don't want to make sure we have well we want to make sure we have a signal control for this so ink it comes and coming down to 10 seconds okay it's going to be eight second burn so let's just burn and that should adjust our inclination there we go hopefully that's close enough and you can see it's swaying backwards and forwards. It's just quite a long rocket now. So uh, now we can plot a maneuver out to Mimbus as we normally would. So around over here somewhere and back. Let's just add a maneuver. Let's pull this out and let's see where we need to get to. Uh, so we're gonna have to move this around a touch, I think, and out a little bit. Around a touch again. And we should get a, uh, a an encounter at some point shortly. Let's just a little bit more. There we go, an encounter. So we can tailor that by focusing on Mimbus as we normally would. And then we can see where this wants us to send it to. So if we just bring up our node, we can just adjust it here to get close-ish. We can obviously always adjust it halfway out and that's uh, particularly easy to do so. Uh, but we're probably going to be leaving that large stage behind. Uh, however, it wants us to be going this way around, not the other way. So we're going to have to make sure we're on the other side of Minmus. I mean, we could always go completely backwards on ourselves just by stopping ourselves. But that is going to work fine, I think. And then can we just apply some... Whoops, too much. Come... Well, bring you in. Okay, there we go. So this is almost like what you plan for a free return. We can adjust that a little bit uh, as we go out there. We're not going to be too exact on this first maneuver burn. So 22 second burn, nearly 900 meters per second, as you might imagine. And the Octo has no way of just pointing at a specific node. So we have to go and move that around manually. And it's in 12 minutes. So I will burn as normal and uh, I'll see you on the other side. So here's our path as we chose it, and here is where this maneuver will take us. So it's going to take us just underneath that, so let's just raise ourselves up and get online with this. That will do, I think. And then we'll have to have a second maneuver from here to get us roughly this orbit. So if we just grab another maneuver and then retrograde. So let's bring ourselves in. Too much far far too much i'm going to make sure we have some sort of um there we go that should be close enough uh we have some sort of connection with kerbin so we should have line of sight all the way out there hopefully uh as long as we don't lose connection with one of the uh one of the sites on the ground so first thing we need to do is just get out here so um let's just can we just warp uh, let's just get out of that and then let's just zoom out so that we can hopefully click on yeah warp here and out we go we want to make sure we have some electric charge so let's uh we've got to face the node anyway and there you are there you are node okay it shouldn't much matter when we do this because obviously we're, we're so far out so let's just focus the view on Minmus. And let's just, wow, estimated burn zero. Okay, but very small engines, of course, so we can just adjust this very, very easily. That's that one done. And just before I go back into warp, I'm just going to stand this up a little bit so that we have a nice solar panel pointing towards the sun. 
out to here. Warp, hopefully we maintain connection. Signal strength is dropping, 98%, but we do have, uh, oh, there we go, 97. So as long as we get line of sight, we should be okay with this antenna. And now this one is how long of a burn? 12 seconds, just to bring us into final orbit. So let's just get ourselves to about here, warp in. And that will be quite easy to do, I think. We should have lots and lots of fuel left over. I mean, look at this by comparison to our man trip early this episode. Yeah, we have lots of, <laughs> lots of fuel spare, hopefully. So we're going to bring ourselves down to about six seconds or so. And any time around he will do, but we want to get this as accurate as possible. So 17 seconds. And then we're going to burn at six. So 10 seconds. And eight. And burn. Okay. So decelerating now. So all the tracks moving around. And in the last few seconds, we should see it snap into one orbit. Let's just repoint ourselves accordingly. Let's just use a smaller amount of thrust to get us to the right orbit. And there we go. So we got another mission complete. Maintain stability for 10 seconds. That should be fine. Um, let's just speed up a little bit. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, and now, <laughs> and now we get a choice. We can keep this satellite here, and it might be useful to do so. But right now we want funds, and we can always relaunch this. So to do that, we have to do an unmanned launch on Minmus. So we're going around the wrong way by comparison to normal. So we're going to be going around this way, and we probably need... Well, we absolutely need to land on the side facing... Uh, Kerbin. Luckily, that's the same side as where the sun is, which is what we need for landing nicely. So we can, let's say, create a maneuver here. Uh, in fact, let's just get rid of all the maneuvers. Make sure I'm correct. Add a maneuver here and pull ourselves retrograde. It might be nice to get onto a flat, but we were not going to show. We're not going to be sure exactly where we're going to land until we get around there. So let's just warp towards uh, around about here. Around we go. We will lose connection behind the moon. But that's not a, much of an issue. There we go. We retake green connection again. And we get electric charge back, of course. Oh, God. Too much. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's okay. We can just uh, just tell this it's going to be a... Um, the next orbit around will be just fine, too. So I should actually use clicking on the orbits to actually um, sort of warp us in. Except that it doesn't like me doing so. No? Not having it? Fine. There we go. Warp here. And in will come. We should maintain connection with Kerbin. Yep, yeah, it is. So we should be okay to land here. And again, at this point, any time here is fine. We may get some of that rotating into place. So well, we don't have any SES, unfortunately, which is, I guess, the, the hard part about this. So let's point ourselves at the maneuver node and let's just burn. And we will get in towards the planet somewhere. If I put it there, then we may get closer. We'll see. Let's just speed up a little bit. Gets rid of this now. We can fly in manually. Now, how much of that moon is going to rotate? Ideally, I'd like to land on flats of some kind. I'm going to just backspace to be constant so it focuses on our spaceship and as you can see our orbit will come in here so we're just going to watch this as we're coming in i don't want to time warp too fast because of the same problem we just had <laughs> well it won't happen again we'll go straight through into the planet if we do that but that's quite nice that's quite nice we could hit that flats as we're coming in yeah i think we will so I need to wait to decelerate, unfortunately. Because if I decelerate too soon, what's going to happen is we're going to move the track this way, and uh, that will stop us from landing in the flats. So I'm going to go forward and cut the camera. And let's just... Oh, I can't just tell it to go retrograde. <laughs> It'd be so nice if I could do that. So we're going to have to fly this in manually like this. All right, so let's fast forward this a little bit, and you can join me close to the surface. And here we come. Let's see how, how well or badly this goes. 
So in we come for landing. Just carefully keeping it very, very slowly. Just <laughs> hovering. I don't really want to do any damage to this, but... There we go. Landed on our engine. Log that. Keep it or transmit it. We're going to transmit it. And that is enough for our third mission of a temperature scan. And then... Well, we've got fuel, so why not just take off again and head ourselves north. And that would be quite useful to have a polar orbiting satellite. So we're using it as a lander and a satellite. Why not? So let's take a look at where this goes. I think that's high enough by far. And then we can just point at the horizon and get pretty close to up here, up here. Can't warp faster than that below 3,000 meters. We should be over above 3,000 meters. Ah, oh, 1,500. Yeah, okay. I'll get us into orbit anyway. And of course, you've seen me do that before, so that will be just fine. And here we are in a polar orbit. Uh, that is 259 by 268, which is perfectly fine. And it should let us maintain a connection back to Kerbin whenever we want it. We've got plenty of fuel in case we need to move this anywhere and electric charge. Well, let's just make sure that this is facing the sun somewhat or indeed uh, at all. Uh, oops, wrong way. And return. There we go. So we've got electric charge. We've got an antenna. We've got a satellite around Minmus, just like we have one around the sun. It's all the way over there. The Unmooner Express. This is the Unmooner Liner. Okay, so here we are back at the Space Center. We're to 362 now with those three missions done all at once. So, you know, being able to, to do that will be cool, I think. Um, we could have an unmanned lander again, but oh, that was that was rough. Uh, so I think we're going to leave that for this episode. We're coming up on time anyway. And I hope you'll join me in the next one. So if you like this episode, feel free to thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, etc. Click the bell if you want notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.